the nation's famous heir was caught in a car with a woman, engaging in scandalous behavior. His girlfriend, however, remained calm. Yes, the woman in the picture is me. I was fuming with rage, but she just smiled. Well, since we've been caught, I guess I'll have to go home and get engaged to him. You'll have to bear with it for a while. After all, he was my unforgettable first love, and I chased him for a long time. After leaving her, I turned all my energy toward my acting career. From a poor substitute actor, I rose to become the lead in a blockbuster drama. She came to the celebration banquet, her eyes no longer filled with arrogance. Who would have thought you'd make it too? Am I still the treasure of your heart? I blew on the tea I held and replied calmly. No, you're overthinking it. You're nothing more than a stain on my life. Chapter 1. You said, with all his money, why does he need to seek excitement in a car? I handed my girlfriend today's headline news. The story was about Vincente, a notorious heir in Beijing, who had just returned to the country and was caught by paparazzi having an affair in a car. The woman in the photo wasn't very clear, sitting deep inside the vehicle. My girlfriend chuckled lightly, unfazed. Well, it's not really anything surprising. She then showered my face with kisses. Darling, I put half a million in your card. Go ahead and spend it however you like. She snuggled closer into my arms, her exposed skin so pale it almost gleamed. Remembering last night's wildness, my throat felt a bit dry. Her other hand's fingers lightly touched my chest, and the boiling blood rushed through the room. I turned and pulled her tightly into my embrace, puzzled. Why are you suddenly giving me your card? I'm not short of money right now. She insisted, take it, your savings can only barely sustain you. I let go of her, sat up, and didn't take the gold card she offered, without minding. She got dressed and asked me to drive her home. On the way, sitting in the passenger seat, she admired her freshly done nails and casually said, Oh, I forgot to tell you, I might be getting engaged. My heart skipped a beat, and I tightened my grip on the steering wheel. Are your parents pushing you? Let me prepare, and I'll go meet them. She shook her head and smiled. You misunderstood. The person I'm getting engaged to isn't you. Vincente has returned, and we grew up together. If I'm going to marry anyone, it can only be him. As for my things at your place, I'm too lazy to pack them. You deal with them however you like. I could hardly believe what I was hearing. The guy from the news today, he plays so dirty. Are you crazy? She glanced at my profile and answered truthfully. The woman in the picture was me. Chapter 2. I was utterly shocked and uncertain as I spoke. Baby, you're not joking. Right. We. Oui. She sat up straight and interrupted me. Yes, that's right. I've been waiting for Vincente to come back. Waiting for a long time. Now that the photos have been taken, our family's arranged marriage might have to happen sooner. I numbly drove the car to the entrance of the villa. Her words. I couldn't fully process any of them. So, what was I to her? At that moment, the car door opened, and a man in casual attire smiled warmly. Monica. Long time no see. My girlfriend happily tidied the loose strands of hair around her ear and then jumped out of the car into his arms. All that remained was me, standing in shock nearby. The men glanced at me and asked, Who is he? My girlfriend pulled away from his embrace, her face beaming with joy. Oh, him? He's just a temporary driver I hired, but as of today, he's resigned. Resigned? My mind buzzed, feeling completely lost. Was everything I had done for her just some companionship job in her eyes? A driver. The men gave me a once-over pulling a wad of bright red bills from his wallet. Okay, I just got back from abroad. Is this enough for a tip? Her affectionate gaze never left him. I think I finally understood her message. I had foolishly thought she was the one destined for me, but in reality, I was just a pawn in their rich family's game. My throat tightened as I stepped out of the car and tossed the keys to her fiancé. No need. Park it yourself. He didn't react in time, and the car keys slipped from his wrist, landing on the ground. His face darkened immediately, and he ordered, pick them up. My girlfriend grabbed his arm and scolded me. What are you throwing a tantrum for? Aren't you an adult? Show some manners. Apologize to Vincente right now, or don't bother seeing me again. I nodded. Okay, then let's not see each other again. Chapter 3 The villa was built halfway up the mountain, and it was hard to catch a taxi nearby. I walked alone down the mountain road, the winter wind as sharp as a knife, cutting into my face painfully. A familiar red sports car pulled up beside me, honking twice. The window rolled down. Revealing Vincente's smug face. Your name's Cameron. Right. I've done some research on you. My eyelid twitched. So what? He pointed at his watch with one finger. Limited edition. 13 million. Just a toy for me. And your parents run a little hole in the wall restaurant in some small town. Yet they gave birth to you. A leech trying to live off a woman. It's disgusting. The life we lead is something you can't even imagine. Doing nothing. I still make tens of millions in passive income every month. Got it. I don't want you seeing Monica again or your family might not be able to handle the consequences. 
I clenched my fists, try touching my family, and see what happens. He gave me a contemptuous look before sharply turning the steering wheel and driving back toward the villa. Monica was born into a wealthy family, a dazzling princess in the social circles of Beijing. The gap between people was decided from birth. Being with her was never something I could have pursued on my own. The first time I met her was just after I graduated from university. I had no connections, no resources. Every day, I went from one film set to another with my resume, hoping for a chance to be an extra. Luckily, I finally got the opportunity to play a corpse. To nail the role, I exaggeratedly practiced dying from a gunshot in a corner. As I dramatically collapsed to the ground, I suddenly heard a scream behind me. Ah, R, are you okay? Embarrassed, I got up and saw a stunningly beautiful face. Her long lashes fluttered, and she looked startled, like a frightened kitten. At that moment, I thought, how can someone be so beautiful? Flustered, I explained myself, and she burst into laughter, dimples appearing, you've got a nosebleed. At that moment, a group of people from the director's team rushed over. They were probably looking for her. She waved them off and the director's gaze landed on me. His eyes lit up. Are you with the crew? You've got a good look. Take him to makeup and let him audition for the third male lead. Because of her, my daily pay jumped from 200 to 1000, and I even got a lot of speaking lines. After the audition, I planned to find her to thank her. A few veteran extras stopped me and warned. Pretty boy, licking boots. Huh? You think you can get close to Monica too? You want to climb the ladder? Look in the mirror first. You think she'd be interested in you? I froze, and that's when I learned her name. Her father's name was even more famous, echoing like thunder in my ears. A luxury motorhome was parked not far away. I glanced at her from afar and silently mouthed, Thank you. On the last day of filming, as we wrapped up, she surprisingly sat down next to me with a boxed meal from the crew and mumbled, You've already eaten two boxes. Is it really that good? Chapter 4 I stared at her, forgetting to swallow the food in my mouth. She tried a small bite, pouting, MM, not good. She was being playful, acting cute, teasing me. At that moment, would I still be a man if I held back? I boldly put down my meal and warmly invited this princess of the Beijing elite to have some spicy hot pot. At the table, things were a bit awkward. She stared at the chopsticks on the table but didn't make a move. Feeling anxious, I pulled out a pair of clean chopsticks from my bag and handed them to her. Only then did she accept them with a smile, and her eyes sparkled as she began to eat. Seizing the opportunity, I sincerely thanked her. After all, it was because of our chance encounter that I had been given such a rare opportunity. I thought that after this meal, our lives would never cross again, but I was wrong. She came up with all kinds of wild excuses to meet me. Things like her bike chain breaking, not being able to catch a taxi in the middle of nowhere, setting the kitchen on fire while frying an egg, or a strange man following her, begging me to come to her rescue. Even though I knew these things couldn't possibly happen to her, I still went. When she rested her head on my shoulder, I trembled slightly. I knew then. I was falling for her. Chapter 5. After that, we were together for three whole years. I always put her first, constantly worried that I wasn't doing enough for her, afraid she would feel wronged. More often than not, she didn't act like a spoiled rich girl but more like a clingy, adorable girlfriend, a true treasure. I would often wake up laughing from my dreams, to make things easier when it came time to meet her parents. I worked tirelessly. Every acting opportunity one got, I cherished like it was gold. I poured over every detail of the scripts. Rehearsed each line repeatedly. I even controlled my diet for hours just for a few seconds of screen time. Yes, I wanted to prove myself. Even if she lost everything one day, I'd still be able to give her the world. In my eyes, our relationship was stable, passionate, and full of excitement. But on one otherwise ordinary morning, she told me she was getting engaged. Chapter 6 Back home, I sank into the couch, taking a deep breath. A sour feeling spread through my chest. Indescribable. I couldn't spit it out nor could I swallow it. What a miserable feeling. Her designer clothes and bags filled the closet, and I was wondering what to do with them. Then, director Zhang called, complaining, Cameron, don't bother coming tomorrow. I'm cutting all your scenes out. What bad luck. With that, he hung up on me. Frantically, I called him back, only to find that he had blocked me. I had poured so much effort into this role, making thorough preparations. I could confidently say no one understood the character better than I did. After asking several acquaintances, I finally tracked down where director Zhang was. When I arrived at the bar, they had already had quite a bit to drink. To my surprise, Monica and her fiancé were there too. Her long, fair legs crossed elegantly, her eyes slightly hazy, and a faint smile on her red lips. She greeted me first. Hey, didn't we agree never to meet again? Vincente wrapped his arm around her shoulders, staking his claim. Isn't this the guy playing the third male lead, begging directors left and right for scraps? 
The people around him must have caught the coldness in his voice, and they all began to mock me. These days, young actors will stoop to anything for a role. Can't find an actor from the D list. I've got tons of them on my WeChat. Look at him. Such a pretty boy. Say a few sweet words, and I might just introduce him to some wealthy women. All right. Cut him some slack. I think he's from director Zhang's crew. Let's do the director a favor and let him stay to pour drinks. Otherwise, he might start crying later. Laughter followed. Loud and full of undisguised ridicule and scorn. Chapter 7. Director Zhang, embarrassed, called me aside and whispered, Are you out of your mind? Get lost. Now. I met Vincente's amused gaze. At this point, how could I not understand? This was all his doing. The fire in my heart flared up in an instant. Three months of preparation. And just because of one word from him, it all amounted to nothing. Monica put down her wine glass and slowly walked toward me. Cameron, your face looks so dark. Are you feeling unwell? Vincente followed closely behind her, glaring at me. If you're not feeling well, go to the hospital. Don't ruin our fun. The next second, Monica, in a familiar and bold move, grabbed my collar and placed her hand on my forehead. The smell of alcohol hit my nose. She was drunk. Huh. You're not running a fever. You're still cooler than me. Vincente quickly wrapped his arm around her waist, pulling her back to him. Monica, I'll get jealous. You wouldn't like him, would you? I hesitated for a moment. Those sweet memories spun in my mind. Everything we shared, how could any of it have been fake? Maybe, just maybe, she was temporarily confused. Could I forgive her? If she made her feelings clear now, I might reconsider. But in the next moment, she playfully stood on her toes and kissed Vincente on the cheek. How could I possibly like him? Vincente. You know how much I missed you all these years without you. Then she turned to me. A poor man's affection is worth the least. Cameron, you didn't take it seriously, did you? How could I take it seriously? I forced a smile, shaking my head. You're not worth it, I repeated. Yes, not worth it. Chapter 8. That night, I sat in my empty apartment, staring into space. I didn't know how much time passed before I finally snapped out of it. Including her in my future plans, what a delusion. Pulling myself together. I headed to the company to sign some contracts. As I walked by, my colleagues shot me strange glances. The vice president called me into his office and handed me a new notice. Cameron, here's the thing. There aren't any suitable roles for you right now. But there's a variety show. A variety show. As an actor, maintaining a sense of mystery is important so the audience can better engage with your future roles. Before I could refuse, his tone left no room for negotiation. The show is in Africa. It's about experiencing African culture. The filming will last one to two years. You should go home and start packing. I let out a small laugh and sat across from him. This is Vincente's doing, isn't it? He pressed his lips together. Cameron, this is a valuable opportunity. Don't be ungrateful. Let's terminate the contract. I stood up. I'll pay the penalty according to the original agreement. For an actor, these young years are the most important. Going to Africa or being sidelined, it made no difference. Quitting still left me with opportunities. Compromising would make it much harder to come back. I packed my things and left the company. I knew it was a bit pathetic, but Vincente wasn't the only one waiting to see me fail. As I reached the front of my building, two drunk men holding beer bottles walked up to me. Without a word, they bumped into me, deliberately letting the bottles slip from their hands. The sound of glass shattering echoed in the air. Are you blind? Pay for my beer. I shoved him aside, my emotions flaring up instantly. Get lost. Tell Vincente if he has guts. He can face me himself. The two men exchanged a glance, and any sign of drunkenness vanished. They quickly pinned me to the ground. My face was pressed hard against the broken glass, and the smell of blood filled the air. You think you're worthy of saying his name? Know your place. They kicked me a few more times before leaving. I had no chance against these trained bodyguards. Leaning against the wall, I made my way back inside and dug out some disinfectant. Fortunately, the wounds on my face weren't too deep. They'd heal. But just then, I got a call from my parents. They asked if I had offended someone. Today, a group of unfamiliar faces had shown up at their little restaurant, asking about me. They ate a lot but didn't pay, saying to put it on my tab. I gritted my teeth so hard they nearly cracked, but I told them it was just a few old friends and not to worry. I knew this was Vincente's warning. He was letting me know that crushing me was as easy as crushing an ant. My life was something he could toy with at his whim. He could create endless problems for me, make my life miserable. After treating my wounds, I saw someone had posted a casting notice in a group chat. They urgently needed a good-looking male actor with some experience. Someone willing to jump into an icy river for an underwater scene. The winter cold was unbearable. Jumping into the water would take a lot of courage. And right now, courage was all I had left. I quickly sent over my details. Their response came just as fast. Buy a plane ticket. Come immediately. Chapter 9. It was already 2 a.m. when I arrived at the airport. But to my surprise, 
The production team had sent a private car to pick me up. The filming location was packed with people. A sure sign that this was a big budget production. The assistant director glanced at the injury on my face and nodded in approval. The wound looks good. Fits the character's image perfectly. No need for makeup. I was worried it'd get messed up in the water. I thought my turn to shoot would come soon. But days went by without any news. I had memorized my lines so well I could recite them in my sleep. Apparently, they were waiting for the lead actress to finish shooting a few other scenes before starting. It was a large-scale period drama production, and I was playing the male lead's past incarnation, saving the female lead from an icy river. The scene was to be filmed on location. Everything was ready, and we were just waiting for the actress to arrive at 3 p.m. But, just my luck, it started snowing under the overcast sky. Then, out of nowhere, Monica called me. Cameron, look outside. It's snowing heavily. I didn't say anything. Recalling the first snowfall of the year, back then, Monica had pulled me outside to build a snowman, but the snow was too light, and we only managed to make a small snowball that she held in her hands. When the big snow comes, promise to build me the cutest snowman ever, I hugged her and lovingly agreed. Now, the person building snowmen with her was the one she'd wanted all along. After a moment of silence, I asked, what do you want? She paused for a moment, her voice quieter, why did you quit so suddenly? Wasn't being an actor your biggest dream? I responded with a grunt, what does that have to do with you, don't call me anymore, before I could finish, I heard Vincente's voice in the background, Monica, who are you talking to, there was silence on the other end, but the call didn't disconnect, I could hear the sound of their lips meeting, the heavy breathing between kisses, I ended the call and immediately blocked her number, chapter 10, the lead actress finally arrived, storming in with her entourage, she had already done her makeup in the car, dressed in a snow white robe, her cheeks a soft red, and her flowing sleeves fluttering, she looked like an ethereal goddess, holding her script in one hand, she cast occasional glances in my direction, director, I'm ready, let's begin, the underwater setup was complete, but the director seemed surprised, wait, Juliet, where's your stunt double, the river is freezing, are you really going in yourself, using stunt doubles for lead actors was common on set, especially for dangerous or difficult scenes that required professionals, Juliet nodded seriously, there are some close-up shots needed for this. It's an important scene, and it's best if I do it myself. Indeed, this scene marked the beginning of the lead character's fateful connection. It was crucial that it be filmed beautifully and romantically. Of course, my face would likely be downplayed in post-production, replaced with shots of the male lead. The director called for a quick meeting. Juliet motioned for me to come over, and I walked up, script in hand. She raised an eyebrow slightly. You've memorized everything, right? I don't want to jump in the water twice. I nodded seriously. All I had to do was jump into the water, swim to her, and carry her out. The next shot would cut to the lakeshore, where I'd check her breathing and ask how she was. Just one line of dialogue. Nothing too complicated. She stared at me for a while longer, as if she had something more to say. Once the director gave the final approval and safety measures were in place, we started filming. Juliet was the first to enter the water. Her face contorted in pain as she struggled a few times in the icy depths. It didn't seem like she was acting. I quickly jumped in. The freezing water felt like a thousand needles piercing my skin, suffocating and painful. I swam over to Juliet, grabbing her by the waist. I was supposed to pull her up to the surface, but instead, she placed her hands on my shoulders and leaned her head closer to mine. The intimate gesture caught me off guard, and the safety harness didn't pull us up as planned. With the underwater camera rolling, I forced myself to lean in and kiss her. Juliet responded by wrapping her arms around my neck, naturally deepening the underwater kiss. It wasn't until the safety harness finally started pulling us up that I carried her out of the freezing river. In the next scene by the lakeshore, I shivered from the cold, but I still had to steady my breath to deliver my line. R, are you okay? Her eyes widened as if trying to memorize my face, but her gaze wavered from exhaustion before her dark eyes closed helplessly. For some reason, my heart ached. Is this the power of an award-winning actress? After the director called, cut, she immediately stood up, shivering as her assistants rushed over with towels and coats. Her bright eyes landed on me. What are you standing around for? Go change your clothes. It took me a second to react before heading to the changing room to dry off and get dressed. When I came out, she and the director were reviewing the footage of the scene. On the screen, it was just the two of us, locked in a side profile kiss. Her ears turned slightly red as she spoke in a soft voice. It looks good. Let's keep it. The director gave me a curious look, and I was just as confused. That kiss wasn't in the script. It was supposed to happen later. After she was saved and shared a romantic moment with the male lead in the bamboo forest, I scratched my head, I think it looks good too. The scene came out really romantic. Juliet smiled faintly. Well then, why don't you play the male lead? Chapter 11. 
I thought Juliet was joking, but the director didn't say anything. This was the largest film studio in the country, and even late at night, many restaurants were still brightly lit. Juliet had that first love face, pure and warm, in person. She was even more beautiful than in her films. To have won a Best Actress award at such a young age, I honestly admired her. She sat across from me, holding her cup of water, taking a small sip, and looking at me with a complex expression. Actually, the male lead of this film was originally intended for you. I was confused. A film like this would usually cast a top-tier actor. How could it have been me? There must have been a mistake. Juliet and I had never worked together, nor had we ever crossed paths. She cleared her throat. Actually, you've had a few breakout moments over the past three years. Both your acting skills and audience appeal are excellent. But for some reason, whenever you started trending, the search terms were suppressed. A few big films even reached out to you, but you turned them down. I fell silent. I had no idea about any of this. Every time the company had meetings with me, they only showed me negative feedback, constantly criticizing me. When you sent in your resume to play a stunt double, I was surprised for a long time, but it's okay now. We're just getting started. Would you be interested in taking on the lead role? We can negotiate the payment. She blinked, clearly hoping for a positive response. Suddenly, I felt a tightness in my chest. Monica used to often ask me to accompany her on trips abroad. Every time she made such a request, my schedule would mysteriously clear up, leaving me with nothing to do. Turns out, all of this had been arranged by her through the company, just so I'd have more time to be with her. Several projects I was rejected from, mocked for, criticized for, had been part of this setup. Negative reviews poured in, tearing apart my acting skills. At one point, I even doubted whether I was working hard enough or if I was truly lacking. But I never imagined it was her orchestrating the smear campaign against me. Ha, huh, what did she really think of me? I was so angry. I'd been foolishly worrying about losing her, fantasizing about a future with her. Juliet's long lashes lowered slightly, and she asked with a hint of regret, is it because your girlfriend doesn't agree? It wasn't a secret that Monica was my girlfriend, but I knew that many people secretly thought of me as her keptman, not truly her boyfriend. I shook my head and smiled bitterly. Being part of this project would be an honor. I'll study the script carefully. Her eyes lit up, and she extended her hand. Then here's to a successful collaboration. I smiled back and shook her hand, but then my phone rang, apologetically. I glanced at Juliet and answered the call from an unknown number. On the other end, Monica's voice sounded soft and tired, with a hint of frustration. Cameron, you've grown bold, haven't you? How dare you block me? Chapter 12 I took a deep breath. In the past, when she would pout or act cute, I'd soften immediately, but this time, I really wanted to end things with her for good. Yet here she was, casually calling me again. I laid it out clearly. Yeah, we shouldn't be in touch anymore. She paused for two seconds, her tone turning annoyed. Where are you? Juliet was fiddling with her phone, but she subtly shifted her chair closer to me. I looked out the window at the increasingly heavy snowfall and muttered, Monica, you're getting married. She chuckled lightly, her tone relaxed. Hey, are you really mad? I'm just staying at home for now. It's not like I'm actually leaving you. So, she wanted her perfect, unforgettable first love, husband, and me as her backup. I couldn't help but stand up abruptly and confront her. You think you can just keep me around like some D-list actor you're sponsoring? Enough. Don't call me again. I don't want to see you anymore. Juliet jumped slightly at my sudden movement. Cameron, your hand. In my frustration, I had knocked over a water glass, cutting my hand in the process. Monica fell silent for a few seconds. Then her voice turned cold. Who's in bed with you? Screw you, I spat, hanging up and turning off my phone. Juliet pulled a bandage from her bag and handed it to me. Sorry, if it's inconvenient, I can leave. I waved her off. No, it's fine. Now that everything's settled, let's discuss the details tomorrow. You should get some rest. She looked away and responded softly. All right, I'll head out first. Back at the hotel, I turned my phone on again, only to be bombarded with messages from Monica and one from an unknown number. I really like your acting. You're not some D-list actor. Believe in yourself. Keep going. I quickly realized it was probably from Juliet. She'd been in the industry two years longer than me, and I hadn't expected her to notice my work. I felt a warmth in my heart, genuinely touched. Chapter 13 For the next few days, I shut myself off from the outside world, completely focused on studying the script. My scenes with Juliet went especially smoothly. Just by looking into her eyes, I could instantly get into character, even when she improvised. I could follow her lead seamlessly. The director was thrilled, clapping his hands and exclaiming, brilliant. Today's scene involved the female lead collapsing in the snow, gravely injured, with the male lead finding her barely alive. This was where the male lead, with tears in his eyes, had to confess his deep love, 
I prepared myself emotionally, trembling as I lifted her from the blood-red snow. Seeing her pale face, I felt a sudden pang of pain. Thinking about the ties that had bound us for lifetimes, I rested my forehead against hers, letting my tears fall onto her face. Then, a voice interrupted the moment. Cameron, quite the emotional performance. Ah. I looked up, stunned to see Monica, smirking and standing in front of the director's camera with her handbag in hand. You. I couldn't believe my eyes. How much do you make for this? Is this what you're ignoring me for? She said, then turned to glance around, looking down on the director as she continued. I'm Monica. I'm taking Cameron with me. Tell me what this'll cost you, and I'll make up for the loss. I'll also throw in some additional investment. The director's mouth hung open, unable to speak for a moment. You, this. I'll start with 50 million in sponsorship. I know the production costs are high. Afterward, have your people negotiate with my company. After saying this, she elegantly walked toward me, frowning slightly, still holding her, don't want to let go. Juliet struggled to her feet, staggering in the snow. I quickly helped her steady herself. She looked at me and asked, Cameron, do you want to keep filming? Monica's face immediately darkened. Who asked you? Juliet ignored her, keeping her eyes on me. I do, I said firmly. Juliet smiled brightly, her frown disappearing as she assured me, as long as you want to, no one can take you away. Monica opened her mouth to argue, but I took her by the arm and led her away from the set. Once in the break room, I shook off her hand and said coldly, are you bored? Come to mess with me again. Monica didn't get angry, she smiled and moved closer, pressing her hand against my chest, don't you miss me, stop acting, okay, I'll buy you a house and a car in Beijing, I'll give you money every month, don't leave me, I've gotten used to having you, I took a step back, finding it all laughable, you really do think of me as your boy toy, don't you, didn't you keep saying you love Vincente, Cameron, Monica's eyes flashed with panic, I did say I love him, but my love for you is real too, don't be so stubborn, we've been together for so many years, Right. She said she loved me, but never said she loved only me. Yes. I'm stubborn. I want to be a good actor. There have been so many great opportunities, but you chose to deceive me. There's no going back. We're done. Go live your life with Vincente. She froze for a moment, then pushed me into a chair, straddling my lap and wrapping her arms around my neck. I'm sorry, Cameron. I really can't live without you. Even when he holds me at night, all I can think about is you. I almost call out your name. I don't believe you don't feel anything for me. Kiss me. Just then, someone furiously twisted the door handle. I had locked the door. He couldn't get in. Vincente's voice came from outside. Monica, are you in there? Monica. Monica buried her face in my neck, her warm breath on my skin. As long as you promise never to leave me, I'll break off the engagement with him. I calmly pushed her away, stood up, and opened the door. Go home. We're done. Monica stood frozen for a moment, her eyes red. Before rushing out in tears, a bewildered Vincente quickly chased after her. Chapter 14. I didn't understand Monica's motives. Maybe it was resentment or just habit, but I had already made up my mind to let go of the past. Filming continued, and the director's attitude toward me became increasingly friendly. On the day we wrapped up the shoot, the assistant director and a few staff members got drunk and insisted on following me to the restroom. They stood beside me, their tone dripping with jealousy. Hey, I see good fortune written all over your face. You'll definitely make it big someday. Just don't forget about us when you do. I awkwardly nodded as I fumbled with my belt. Another one chimed in. In this day and age, looks aren't enough. You need real skills. But you've got it made, first with Monica from the Sun family, and now the Lee family backing you. What am I missing compared to you? They were so drunk their words slurred, barely able to aim properly. I fled the restroom as quickly as I could. Hey, there you are. Are you trying to avoid drinking? One of Juliet's female friends shouted when she saw me. I walked over and joined in for a few drinks. Juliet already a bit tipsy, had a dazed, dreamy look in her eyes. She opened her mouth to say something, but I couldn't hear, so I bent down to listen more closely. She hesitated for a moment, then mumbled, are you trying to take advantage of me? I'm not kissing you. Before I could explain, her lips pressed against my cheek. Great job with the acting. Stick with me, and I'll get you into my company. I'll make sure you're well taken care of. Her warmth lingered on my face, and her scent filled my nose. I steadied my mind, but I couldn't suppress the physical reaction of my body. Chapter 15. After the shoot wrapped up, I didn't join her company. Instead, I gathered a few old friends and started my own studio. They handled all the miscellaneous business, leaving me free to focus solely on acting. Just as Juliet predicted, the period drama drama became a massive hit. The search terms dominated the trending lists every day. Fans on the streets referred to me as the young master. Endless offers for endorsements and new roles flooded in, keeping our small studio incredibly busy. 
I made sure to clear my schedule early so I could attend the celebration party for the show. Outside the restaurant, a massive crowd of fans gathered, shouting my name and demanding autographs. Juliet arrived wearing a light white dress that showed off her long, slender legs. Her newly dyed hair made her skin look even more radiant, like a goddess straight out of an anime. She walked into the venue and immediately spotted me. You've made it big, superstar. Our ship fandom is almost at a million strong. Shouldn't we give them some fan service? Laughing. I pulled out my phone and took a series of goofy selfies with her. Not far away, Monica arrived with her fiancé, Vincente. True to her word, she hadn't withheld a cent of the sponsorship money. With the drama's success, her share of the profits had been lucrative, so she had every reason to be at the party. Vincente no longer looked at me with the same arrogance as before. Now, his eyes were filled with avoidance. Cameron, congratulations. You've achieved half your dream. Now all you need is to win an award, Monica said calmly. I calmly replied with a thank you. She rambled on about her wedding with Vincente, but I didn't engage. It wasn't until Juliet and I went up on stage that I finally felt a sense of relief. The host egged us on to hug, and Juliet, unbothered, willingly agreed. I took the initiative to give her a friendly hug. The crowd erupted in cheers. Monica, however, sat in the audience with a scowl, glaring at the host as if willing him to end our interview as quickly as possible. But just as we stepped off the stage, the sound system malfunctioned, emitting a piercing screech of static. Everyone covered their ears in discomfort. Monica, as if startled, crashed into my arms, clutching my waist tightly. Everyone around us looked confused. Vincente's face darkened as he struggled to maintain his composure. Monica, let go. Stop fooling around. But Monica suddenly burst into tears, and in that moment, I understood. During thunderstorms, she used to curl up in my arms, seeking comfort as I gently soothed her. Cameron, she whispered my name. I don't want to marry him. I only want to be with you. Can we start over? Vincente exploded, cursing, are you out of your mind? We spent 10 million on this wedding, and the invitations have already been sent. Chapter 16, I think I finally understand, Cameron, you're the only one I've ever truly loved, being with him, I don't feel anything, whether we're eating or sleeping, I can't even stand to be near him, sometimes I imagine he has your face, Vincente clenched his fists, Monica stubbornly grabbed my hand, take me away, I'll agree to anything you want, if this had been earlier, I would have taken her without hesitation. I loved her once, but did she ever truly love me? The answer was no. I slowly pulled my hand away from hers, shaking my head. Don't touch me, you're filthy. Tears streamed down her rosy cheeks as she walked away from the party. Her steps unsteady. I watched her go, but I didn't follow. Chapter 17 For a long time after, I didn't hear anything about Monica, but her father came to see me once. She broke off her engagement with Vincente because of you. Come marry into our family, and take good care of Monica. We won't treat you badly. He had a mild manner, dressed simply, but his tone carried an undeniable coldness. Also, stop acting. The Sun family can't afford to lose face. After the wedding, you'll stay home, and I'll find someone to teach you what to do. There's a new car parked outside. Consider it a welcome gift. Go cheer her up. She hasn't been in a good state lately. He placed the keys on the table, waiting for me to respond. I picked up the keys and headed for the door. I'll see her, but after this, I don't want you to bother me again. His expression darkened immediately his lips moving to say something, but before he could speak, I had already left, it was a brand new black McLaren GT, the license plate not even installed yet, Monica was sitting in the passenger seat, the moment she saw me, her eyes lit up with joy, Cameron, I knew you'd come, I just knew, it turns out she had been waiting here all along, that saved me the trouble of going to find her, I calmly placed the car key on the driver's seat, some things, once they happen, can't be fixed, I still feel disgusted, when you chose him back then, I went through hell, I don't want to go through that again, I was the one you left behind first, so, don't wait for me, it's pointless, Monica's eyes turned red instantly, and she lowered her head hastily before getting out of the car and running toward me, she opened her arms, trying to hug me, I stepped back, I'm sorry, I was wrong, she shook her head in pain, I shouldn't have been so selfish, getting involved with Vincente like that, I never thought there'd be a day when you'd truly leave me, I, I noticed a car slowly approaching behind her, I walked past her and stopped Juliet's car, can you give me a ride? Juliet glanced at Monica, then at me, and waved me in, hop in, in the rearview mirror, Monica stood there for a moment before slowly sinking to the ground, as my emotion settled, I asked Juliet, where are we going? The soft light traced the gentle contours of her face, even without makeup, she looked stunning, I've got a good script in hand, I was thinking we could talk about it, I nodded and teased, do we have another love scene? She pouted, what else? You think you can play my son? I laughed. I can play anything. She rolled her eyes playfully. 
A few days later, paparazzi snapped photos of us in the car together, and we ended up trending online. Fans flooded social media, begging for confirmation. I publicly clarified that we were planning a second collaboration and expressed hope that it would go well. Not long after, Juliet messaged me. Humph. Didn't we agree to keep it a secret? I leaned back in my chair, chuckling. After a moment of thought, I posted a new update and tagged her. If we get a second, third, or endless collaborations, would you be up for it? The post exploded quickly. Fans went wild, commenting. Wait, am I seeing things? Or is Cameron confessing? Oh my god. I think I just shipped a real CP. Hours passed, and Juliet still hadn't responded. I felt a bit anxious. She liked me, right? Otherwise, she wouldn't have driven all the way from the film set, pretending it was a coincidence. After hearing that I had met with Monica's father, when I stopped her car, she had seemed nervous. That evening, I couldn't hold back anymore and gave her a call. She picked up but didn't say anything. I cleared my throat. So, have you made up your mind? Are you up for it? She laughed softly. Come find me, and I'll tell you. My heart raced as I rushed out the door. On the way, I rehearsed a long, heartfelt confession in my head, but after just one sentence, she said yes.